Pois. Gosto de Brasil. I've been with John Bell now, just just on two years, maybe a little bit more than maybe a month over. But, uh, the one thing he does allow you to do, and that is act as your own boss to get, you know, the thing is that he wants to go on stage and play. Mm -hmm. Playing the sort of music that John plays, um, it gives you a lot of opportunity to develop your own ideas. It gives you a lot of freedom, you know, within the blues sort of framework anyway. So I, I did him, you know, it did do me a lot of good being with John. Do you respect him um, as a musician? Oh yeah, he knows what he's doing. You know. Yeah, undoubtedly it's a prestige band, you know. But uh, I mean, yeah, prestige band. But I mean, it's not certainly it's um, it's not the best band that I've ever been in musically. It's, it's very re rewarding because, as I say, it's a jamming band. I mean, I don't think an awful lot of people that went to see John, certainly not uh, some of the American audiences, I don't think realise that we used to go on and just jam. I mean, you used to shout at keys and we'd have a vague clue of what it was about. Basically, we, we'd, we'd just, you know, start playing, you know. <laughs> He's a very, very professional man, I think. In fact, the most professional I've ever worked for. He, he really knows what he wants to do, you know. And this, this is his strength, you see. He's, he's just a very, very, you know, straight guy. He knows exactly what's, what he wants to do, and he does it, mm. you know. And, and uh, you know, I mean, he listens to other people's point of view, but, um, you know, uh, once he gets an idea, that's it. <laughs> I don't know, we'll get too bloody controversial. I might have talked myself out of a really job. He doesn't want to know all the hang-ups that go into getting equipment and all that kind of stuff mm. arranged. And as long as you get the end product for him, um, you can use whatever device and means at your dis disposal to do it, you know. The things that made him successful, um, well, he, he stuck to his, his music. I mean, he admits that he couldn't really play anything else but blues music. And this has been what he's always done, as far as I know anyway. And he, and he stuck to that. It, he was only difficult to work with when I started to, to um, sort of veer off towards other things. You know, I began getting interested in other things. I didn't really want to play his music, you know. Mm. And uh, it was difficult then, you know. He's not a difficult person to get on with, mm. you know, really. Mm. A lot of 
other people seem to think so. Well, he wanted the music to be really reminiscent of a lot of the things that he'd already done in the past. You know, it was really, uh, you couldn't really get into anything too complex, actually, and in effect, during the time I was with him, the music was more complex when I first started. Over in America, the idea of perhaps not using drums, but it's, mm. it's only in the last couple of weeks, maybe. You know, mm. it's, it's just that over there, you see, you really see the, the number, mm. the vast number of this, these electric guitar mm. yeah. trays, you know, and, and if there was ever a time to sort of try something, you mm. know, sort of abolish that, you know, I, I can't really see much point in uh, doing, mm. doing that again. Mm. You know, and Eric, Stan, Peter mm. and, and Mick, you know, yeah. we all achieved a certain repetition, reputation mm. at that time. keep my volume mm. down and, and that always seems to be to end up with the most impact the group now without a drummer i mean 
like I, as I said earlier, I think with a drummer it would probably sound even better with the with the right drummer. But I think John has sort of made his play, and he he's settled on this thing. And uh, I mean, I I don't, you don't know what he's sort of actually thinking about it now, but um, you know he's made his play, and, uh, and that's it. But that's typical of John. <laughs> me on my own, you know, to work as I wanted to, um, which I appreciated very much, but if I wanted any help, it was always there, you know. It was very cooperative. <laughs> Quite a, look, quite a bit older, and that time I thought he was a complete nutcase because he had these harmonicas and these weird gadgets hanging around him. He used to live in trees and things. Then after a while, in, you know, he used to come out with these little weird little schemes, you know, and that seemed mad at the time, but they, they were always turned out sanely. You know, they were sort of good things to do. I don't think people are uh, like drawn to him. John usually chooses the people he wants. Chooses very carefully, you know, he knows what he wants, he usually gets it, too. Mm. Um, how long he keeps what he gets, I mean, this goes to anyone, it's, it's a matter, a different matter, you know. Mm. Um, I, I just think he just chooses what he wants, you know, mm. that's how he gets musicians. I was going for a very funny stage, it was, it was probably me, we, we used to have uh, a lot of arguments and I used to think he was a hard person to get along with then, you know. Mm. But that was, I think that was more me. Than John, but I, I love John very much. You know, he's a great person, mm. great person. You know, a lot of people think he's, or say he's uh, very mean, very hard to get along with. But I, I, I can't see it now. You know, I can't mm. see it at all. He's a very straight person. Yeah. Mm. It's obviously, I'm going to be on the road. I've got to first of all, for I've got to cut down mm. the number of pieces I do mm. because it's like the ludicrous case of what we've got now. You know, yeah. there's no time being set aside to record or do any other outside things, which are the, the most important things because they reach the largest number of people. The time has surely come How did you come to join John? Um, well, I was looking for a job <laughs> about two years, two and a half years ago, and um, I was playing down this club with Alexis Corner, sitting in, and uh, John Mayer was in the crowd, and I didn't know uh, he was there. In fact, I'd never even seen him. And uh, he was sat in and played with me, and uh, we seemed to get something together. And he went his way, and I went home the same night, still wondering about the job. And about three days later, I got a phone call 
and he um, invited me to come down to listen to the band and um, and if I'd like a job, you know, he'd give me one sort of thing. Yeah. So I went down and saw saw the band and uh, was quite amazed because it was just about the the band I wanted to join for quite a long time, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he's much closer now than he was when I was playing with him. He was more um, sort of your actual businessman, band leader, and I pay you type of bloke, you know. He sort of told you what you should do, and when he thought you didn't do it right, he'd tell you about it, you know, which really sort of cheesed me off, because I, I was playing my thing, and I thought, well, being in his band, and he wanted me to be in his band, you know, that we'd have freedom. <laughs> and stuff I'm going to be is with my own label. But it will be a uh, crusade and that will be my pet project. But the, the most important blue sky was JB Label. Mm. He's dead. Yeah. And it's uh, just incredible, um, his story, you know. Mm. And in presenting his music, not only the music, but the idea is to actually uh, shape people up a bit.
with the truth, you know. He said, I want to present a portrait of, of his life and, you know, mm. the conditions and, um, you know, apply it to the songs because, mm. because of the first tie-up. And then, in addition to that, I want to shake up people's conscience that that can happen, mm. you know, that uh, it yeah. can be that obscure and neglected and uh, that they're in complete poverty and he never worked in the last two years. Yeah, and all this in the middle of the blues, yeah. so-called yeah. blues conscious world. Yeah. 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 stage is just is very what, what I call electric you know he's very he's it definitely unique and another thing is whereas most bands are like boys John is a man you know when you watch John on stage he's a man do you think that his influence helped blues-based bands? If you're going to take it back to the roots, it's between him and Alexis Corner. I mean, they're the ones that started actually physically playing. I mean, there were lots of people that dug it, and there were lots of little cliques of people that collected old blues records but that didn't play, you know. Mm. But he and Alexis Corner were the first people that really started to take it into a physical medium, you know, mm. and, and used it and worked in the clubs playing it. And as because of that, I mean, he's responsible for the whole thing, really. is is practically a legend now yeah. 